Kokavan or Kokavin, depending on where you are in the world, is predominantly a braised chicken dish in a white wine sauce. Now, there are lots of recipes for this and there are some very traditional recipes for it, but I'm going to show you my, what I call a fairly quick version. And pretty much all I do is I roast off the chicken in the oven for about 45 minutes until it gets a little bit of color. And I then make a velouté sauce, which I make with chicken stock and I add my white wine to that. Now, it's sort of done in two parts. So we braise or we roast in the oven first, we make our sauce, we combine the two together, we pop it back into the oven to do that final braising. Chicken or poultry or game, and any game bird will work with this. I've done it with uh, duck, spatchcock, poussin, um, turkey, any of those will really work quite well. But we're doing it with chicken today because that tends to be the most predominant ingredient people make with this particular dish. And I'm using chicken chicken Maryland. Now, let me just show you my Marylands. A chicken Maryland is essentially the leg and part of the breast of the chicken and I've got skin on it. Now when you buy Maryland and you buy it from your butcher, it will have skin on it and I tend to cook with the skin on. If you use chicken breasts or parts of the meat that don't have chicken, uh, don't have chicken, don't have skin, this dish will tend to be quite dry and really not that great. So for those of you out there who don't eat any fat at all, particularly animal fat, you probably won't want to make this dish. But having the skin on there really makes a huge difference. I've already placed mine in my cooking vessel. And the reason for that is because it's gonna save my washing up at the end of this recipe. When I'm making this for a large group of people, and the recipe actually talks about making it for six people, then I will use more like a lasagna dish. And it works actually very well in that. I do the whole cooking process in there, except when I make my sauce on the cooktop. But this is only for four people, because that's all I'm feeding tonight. And I am using a much smaller casserole dish, one that actually has a lid, and I will actually use the lid when we do that final braising as well. So let's just put that aside for a minute. So that's our chicken. Let's have a look at the other ingredients we're going to be using. We're going to have some button mushrooms. Now I've already quartered my button mushrooms. Actually, I'll cut them up even more than that. We've got some brown onion, which I've chopped, garlic, fresh parsley, which has been chopped. We're going to be using some robust herbs. Now, the robust herbs are the herbs that have got quite strong flavor, often referred to as Italian herbs. We're going to use sage, thyme, oregano, and marjoram. Now you could also add into there some bay leaves. In fact, I could have got bay leaves. There's bay leaves in my garden. And you could have also put some rosemary in there. All of those will work together. We've got them in two separate sections here. So I've got some leaves, which I've taken off one of my um, sage bushes, some thyme out of my garden as well, but I've also created a bouquet garni. Now, this is a collection of herbs together that have been tied off with a bit of string. We're going to use that in the sauce when it goes back into the oven to allow it to permeate and give it some really strong flavor. Then we'll actually remove that. So there's two lots of uh, herbs we're working with there. And then we've got the ingredients for our sauce, our velouté. We're using chicken stock. Now, ideally you want to make your stock, but I understand not everybody wants to do that. So packet stock will work quite well or, or um, the liquid stock. White wine and some flour. And I'll be making my velouté with olive oil as opposed to butter. And I'm only doing that purely because I think it gives a better result. So we'll talk about that when we get there. And of course, salt and pepper for tasting. So the very first thing that we want to do, let's just move our sauce ingredients out of the way for the moment, is we just want to prepare our chicken to go into the oven. Now, what I'm going to do with this is pre predominantly season it. Let me just grab my olive oil. And we're going to sprinkle over the top of it some of our herbs. Now these tiny little sage uh, leaves that I pulled off are absolutely perfect. A lot of people when they work with fresh herbs, they tend to um, throw this part of it away. And I find these little ones are great when you're popping them back into the oven. Now I've got some fresh thyme and what I'm going to do is break off the leaves from that and just sprinkle it around. Now the easiest way to do this is actually do it in the opposite direction. So we don't want all the stalks, we just want the tiny little bits of those flowers on the end. All right, so once we've done that, a little bit of a drizzle of olive oil over the top and a good seasoning of cracked black pepper and salt. Now, my oven is preheating. I did that before I started the cameras and I've got it on about 180 degrees 
or if you're working with fan forced, that's going to be around about 165 degrees Celsius. And we've set it on fan forced because I want it to work relatively fast to cook that up. So let's pop that in the oven first. Now I am going to set my timer because I'm going to be busy doing other things and I don't want to forget that. Now the next thing to do is to make our sauce but we also want to saute our onions and our garlic and the mushrooms. So let's go to the cooktop and do that. All right, so we're at the cooktop. I've got my oil heating. The first thing I'm going to do now is to add my onions and the garlic. So we want to saute those until they are almost translucent. So two to three minutes. Okay, so once they're translucent, the next step is to add our mushrooms. Right, once those are done, you want to turn that heat off and just transpose, transfer those rather to um, a bowl because we want to let them sit for a little bit while we make our sauce and then we'll return them to the, uh, to the sauce. We're going to use the same pan, however, we want to use all of that fond. Fond is the scrapings that are on the bottom of that pan and you get that when you roast vegetables or you do sauteing or this type of thing. We want to use all of that because that's going to add extra flavour. So just let that sit and cool down. Now with the heat off we're going to actually create our sauce. Now I make my bechamels and my veloutes and all of those types of sauces without any heat to begin with. I know it's different from most of the recipes but it works for me. So we're going to add that little bit of oil to our pan and we're going to add some flour. And we want to make that into a paste. Now there are measurements for this recipe, all right, but I tend to judge myself. Uh, and only because I've been doing it for such a long period of time, I know the consistency that I'm looking for, and I just throw it all in together. Once you've been cooking for a period of time, this becomes second nature. And again, there's no rights and wrongs. You know, you don't have to have it absolutely perfect. So I'm adding a little bit more oil into that. Get that to a nice smooth paste. Make sure all of the flour is mixed in as smooth as possible. Now, once we've got our paste, we still do not turn the heat on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add our stock and our wine gradually. Now, if you find that a wooden spoon is not doing it for you, at this point, you can stop and change to a whisk. Now I tend to use these rubbery type whisks, the non-stick ones, because I find that they are easier to get into the corners of the pans. This will be quite thick to begin with. Remember we've got heat in this pan and because of that it is causing the flour to gelatinize straight away. So you just keep adding, keep mixing until you get all of the lumps out and it's beautiful and smooth. Keep adding your liquid and keep stirring constantly until all of the liquid is added. So what you have now is a very runny sauce, which is natural. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat this now, bring it to boiling point, stirring constantly, and allow it to thicken and the starch in the flour to cook. Okay, so now our sauce is nice and thick, but not overly thick. We don't want it to be so thick that it's not going to just drizzle all over that lovely chicken when we take it out. What's important is that it's cooked the starch, which it has, but it's also given us some consistency in there. So the next thing to do is to decide whether or not you want your sauce to be this light blonde color. Not everybody does, and I am someone who doesn't. So I'm going to add a little bit of Parisian essence. Now, this is something we purchase here in Australia. It comes from a company called Queen's, and it is fantastic. It has no flavor whatsoever. All it does is add brown color. So if you like your sauce to be a little bit darker, whether it be a gravy or a sauce like this, then you add a little bit of that and you get this beautiful brown color. And this is how I quite like my Cockavin sauce. And once I've added that, I'm going to add back into here my onions, garlic and mushrooms. And we're going to give 
a good seasoning of salt and pepper. You'll find afterwards you'll probably have to add more of that once it's cooked in the oven. Now at this point we're also going to add our bouquet garni and this is the one that I've actually tied together. That goes in and we're just going to let that simmer a little bit longer until our chicken is ready. Okay, the chicken's now been in there for 45 minutes, so let's remove that. And what we've got now is a beautifully browned chicken with some nice juice in the bottom as well. So what we need to do now is we need to add our sauce. And that was simmering away there for a few minutes while we were waiting. So we just want to add that in and make sure that we drizzle it all over our chicken. And we're going to add that bouquet garni as well because we want the flavour from that to cook and permeate the whole time this is in the oven. Alright, so the next step now is just to even out our ingredients beautifully. Our chicken is covered, which is exactly what we want, and we're going to put a lid on that and we're going to pop that back into the oven for about 30 minutes. Okay, so the cockavan is done. Let's uh, have a look at it and see what it turned out like. It smells divine. And as you can see, our sauce still has some thickness, but it's not overly thick. And this is what we want it to be. We want it to be pouring consistency. Now, you can serve this up like this in the casserole and then just have a salad or your vegetables or whatever. Or you can plate it up, which is what I'm going to do right now. So we'll just take one of our Marylands. A little bit of sauce. And the way that I would do this is just serve it up with a little bit of freshly cooked asparagus. And our fresh parsley, which you might remember we talked about in the beginning, just drizzled over the top. So there you have it, my very simple and easy cockavan. If you are a chicken lover, this is going to be a great dish for you. But if you're a game lover, if you like poussin or spatchcock or any of those other game birds, try it with that as well. It works so incredibly well with any of them. And I can guarantee you, even the fussiest of eaters will absolutely love this. My 15 year old nephew doesn't eat very much, but he will eat this until the cows come home. Thanks so much for your company this week. I hope you enjoyed the show. I'll look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye for now.